Hello, this is part two of our short series on Should You Trust the Watchtower? Last time we were looking in the publications index under Beliefs Clarified. Let's go back to there. Um, this time, what I was curious about is this 1914 date and to see what they said that they clarified about their beliefs in about 1914. Uh, and it tells us to look at KR50. KR is their book, God's Kingdom Rules. So let's go to God's Kingdom Rules on page 15. Uh, it says here, the Bible students spent decades pointing out that 1914 would be significant in fulfilling Bible prophecy. However, at that time, they believed that Christ's presence had begun in 1874, that he had begun to rule in heaven in 1878, and that the kingdom would not be fully set up until October 1914. The harvest would extend from 19, 1874 to 1914 and would culminate in the gathering of the anointed to heaven. A couple paragraphs down, it says, In 1925, a landmark article appeared in the Watchtower entitled, Birth of a Nation. It laid out convincing scriptural evidence that the Messianic kingdom had been born in 1914. Now, that Landmark article in 1925 uh, with the article Birth of the Nation, and it is available. I have a copy of it, and I've looked at it. And what it lays out here, I think, this is what I was referring to last time as a smokescreen. They seem to be admitting that, yes, in the beginning we had some dates um, set up, and we were wrong about those, and it was cleared up in 1925. That's what it seems to be saying. You'd read this, and you'd think, well, in 1925, this landmark article cleared everything up. I want you to remember that 1925, there is a landmark article. As we move through this talk, I'm going to come back to this point here. Now, one other thing about this um, in this book, God's Kingdom Rules, look at page 20. See, there's an interesting picture here, but not really the picture, the caption at the top. Look at this. It says, in 1914, the Bible students begin to discern the sign of Christ's invisible presence. Now, the other page I said was a smokescreen. This here is just outright deception. Because in 1914, the Bible students were believing that Christ's invisible presence started in 1874. That's what they said in page 50 of this book. And they still believed that in 1914. And they believed that for many years afterwards. So this here is just deception. But let's go back to the early watchtowers and look at what is the original timeline that was given. The anointed originally were supposed to go to heaven in 1878 was the original belief. And the harvest time was from 1874 to 1878. And in 1914, the Gentile times would end. These were the original dates that a guy named Nelson Barber came up with. And Charles Taze Russell, the founder of the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society, met Nelson Barber, liked his outline, liked his dates, thought that they were right, and joined him in his movement uh, as assistant editor to his magazine in 1876. So it's interesting. Where he joined in 1876, he thought within two years that the anointed were going to go to heaven. They didn't use those terms. Uh, the, way, the way he described it is the bride would be translated. So he was expecting to be translated within the next two years. Now, when Charles Taze Russell, or... The others talked about the Gentile times being over in 1914. They don't mean the same thing that the Jehovah's Witnesses mean by that today. Jehovah's Witnesses like to point out that, hey, we've been, we've been talking about 1914 being the end of Gentile times way back until Charles Stays Russell's time in 1876. Well, yeah, you use that phrase, but Russell meant something entirely different than what you would mean today as a Jehovah's Witness. The Watchtower magazine in 1880, this is the way it described the end of the Gentile times. It says, the kingdom of God will have broken in pieces and consumed all earthly kingdoms. That didn't happen in 1914. So when we're talking about Gentile times ending in 1914, according to these early Watchtower magazines, they don't mean what the Watchtower means today by them. Well, nothing happened in 1878. Nelson Barber and Charles Taze Russell parted ways. Russell continued with his work starting the Watchtower. And uh, he believed that the anointed were supposed to go to heaven now in 1881. And the wheat and the tares would be separated. The harvest time now would be from 1874 to 1881. And in 1878, 
Did anything happen there? Well, they normally don't like to just discard a date and say, no, we were totally wrong about the date. They'll say, we were right about the date. We were wrong about what was supposed to happen. In 1878, the nominal church is cast off. The people out there in Christendom who were just not catching light of uh, what Charles Taze Russell was teaching, uh, the nominal church is cast off and Christ begins to reign. And then... 1878 to 1881, the nominal church is given favor. It's allowed three and a half extra years to survive uh, so that people can come out of the nominal church. But what happened in 1881? Nothing happened in 1881. So they changed their thinking about what the Bible teaches. And keep in mind that when they're giving us these dates and these time frames, they're using the Bible in order to come up with these. They're using the Bible and they're saying these are this is what the Bible teaches and the people who rejected our message, they're part of Babylon and all these things. You need to come out of the churches and join our organization because we really know what the Bible teaches. But they keep shifting things around. So now 1914, not only is it the end of the Gentile times, but the anointed are supposed to go to heaven. The harvest time is extended to 1914. The dead in Christ were raised spiritually in 1881. So those who had died in Christ, they get raised up in 1881. And in 1878 now, Satan is bound. 1914 came, and guess what? Nothing happened. And what do Jehovah's Witnesses say? Well, yeah, we, we've admitted our mistakes. Well, you know, actually, sometimes they cover up their mistakes. Look, at this is from Studies in the Scriptures, Volume 3, the 1908 edition. It says this, the deliverance of the saints must take place sometime before 1914 is manifest, since the deliverance of the fleshly Israel is appointed to take place at that time. Just how long before 1914 the last living members of the body of the Christ will be glorified, we're not directly informed. Well, that was the 1908 edition. 1937 edition, it takes away a few words and then adds a few words. Now look what it says. That the deliverance of the saints will take place sometime after 1914 is manifest. They totally changed the meaning of their own text in order to hide the fact that they were wrong about what happened in 1914. Charles Taze Russell, when he originally wrote it, says things were going to happen before 1914. Then they changed it to afterwards. Well, when nothing happened in 1914, as far as them going to heaven, they changed that now to 1918. The anointed go to heaven, the terrors are burned, harvest time now is moved to 1878 to 1918, and then we have three and a half years of preparation before Christ's reign, and the end of the Jewish times of trouble happens in 1918. Why is it important for us to look at all these dates and know all this, that they keep coming and coming up with all these different dates? Let me demonstrate this using watchtower material. Um, in 1930, there's this book they printed called Light. And there's this, they quote a speech from the premier of the British Empire. His, in his speech, he supposedly said, Our two flags, the United States and the British Empire, our two flags, wherever the work of God is to be done in this world, will be flying together. On the next page, the watchtower comments on this. They have been prophesying, particularly since 1918, and their prophecies to date have not come to pass. That alone is strong evidence that they are false prophets. My question is, is the Watchtower brave enough to use their own standard in judging what they have done in giving dates that that things didn't happen? I don't think so. But let's go back. Okay, 1918 didn't turn out well, so now we have 1925. In one Watchtower uh, magazine in 1923, it said that, that Christians today have more to base their faith, on, faith in 1925, as this being the end, as that Noah had, that, that there would be a flood. You have more to base your faith in 1925 than Noah had, that a flood was coming. Now, what did Noah have? God told him, right? So what are they claiming when they say these dates are God's dates? They're claiming... They're getting this information right from God. They're getting it from the work they're doing within the Bible. We have more to trust. 1925 is to be in the end. Other things that they added is the gleaning work begins uh, in 1918. Jesus enters the temple and begins to judge his people. Uh, the harvest period has moved back a little bit now, 1874 to 1914. And in 1881, when the bride was translated, supposedly, 
the 144,000 was filled. The 144,000, that comes from the Bible, the Revelation 7. And according to their teaching, this is all of the 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 high those with the higher calling there can be other people who can be saved that are going to go to heaven but they're of a different class later on the jehovah's witnesses develop the idea that this other class don't go to heaven at all they stay on earth but for this time there's 144,000 with the higher calling there this number is filled by 1840 or 1881 well some of the people start to fall away who were part of the anointed class after 1881. So now we have a period of time between 81 and 1918 for the 144,000. Those could be refilled, those numbers of people who fell away. Now, remember what, what I started with, the landmark article. What year was it? 1925. And what, what do we have in our timeline here? 1925 is supposed to be the date when the anointed go to heaven. The landmark article, all it did is took focus off the prediction that the anointed were going to go to heaven in 1925. That's what the landmark article did. It didn't change things to make a, an outline like this that the Jehovah's Witnesses would believe today. Let me show you the, the outline that the 1925 landmark article shows us. 1874 is Christ's invisible presence. Uh, Christ begins his reign in 1914 and Satan is cast out of heaven. And the, the, the anointed class patiently wait for the kingdom. They've been waiting for 36 years now. Satan's, Satan causes the Watchtower leaders imprisonment in 1918, and that was, that's a fact. Uh, a year later, they were let out of prison. 1919, the church flees into the wilderness. The wilderness signifies a place of safety. Um, after that, in 1922, the, uh, there's a big campaign by the watchtower to advertise the king and his kingdom. And this is all supposedly something that you can find by studying the Bible. You can find these dates in there and their significance. Well, yeah, we know 1925 didn't work out and they kind of pushed that away. After 1925, they still had problems with some of their teachings that they don't agree with today. 1914 to 1918, first part of the Great Tribulation, Jesus inspects his temple in 1918. Uh, the Elijah period of the church is from 1874 down to 1914. This was taught in 1931. Now, 1935 comes along, and this has changed. Elijah, per Elijah period is now 1878 to 1918. The Elijah period of the church starts from 1919 and continues on after that. Let's go back to that book we were looking at earlier, God's Kingdom Rules. On page 20, there was that picture with the caption. It said that in 1914, the Bible students begin to discern the sign of Christ's invisible presence. This book was published in 2014. Recently, they were saying that this is what was going on in 1914. Now, when they talk about Christ's invisible presence, uh, it's just synonymous with the term his second presence. And I've looked back through these magazines and this just isn't the case. For instance, in 1928, they were still saying 1874, was the time of Christ's invisible presence. Well, this did begin to change. In 1930, in January, they said it was 1914. But don't get too excited. That's the date the Jehovah's Witnesses believe today, but it still changed a lot. 1931 saw a lot of changes. All these dates, all these dates were 1931. January, they said it was 1918. In May, they moved it back to 1914 again. September 1st, back to 1918, and September 15th, 1878 this time. In 1932, they said the second coming was in 1914. However, it was interesting, in this magazine they said his coming was in 1914, but the saints at the time didn't recognize his coming until 1918. Well, 1933 saw a lot more changes. In May, they said it was 1918. June 1st, it was 1874. June 15th, they said it was 1918. Now, they seem to hold on to this belief for about eight more years. In 1941, there was a couple changes. In March, they said it was 1914. and May, they said 1918. Now, interesting, similar like the other uh, prediction, they said that his coming was in 1918. However, the saints didn't realize it until 1922. About 1944, we see them landing on 1914, and they're pretty much staying there. Does this bolster your faith in the teachings of the Watchtower? 
them trying and struggling to figure out when the end of, or when Christ came. In 1918, supposedly, the 144,000 were filled. Originally it was 1881, now it's 1918. The current timeline that the Jehovah's Witnesses would use today would look something like this. 1914, Christ reigns, uh, his invisible presence is here, Satan is cast out of heaven. And between 1914 and 1919, there's an inspection and cleansing period. And 1919, the faithful slave, which is the governing body, is appointed, and the anointed start gathering wheat. In 1935, the 144,000 number is filled, and the uh, harvest time continues. It starts in 1914 and continues until the end. Now, later on, they predict, well, at one point, they had predicted 1975 was going to be the end. I'm sure some of you out there are wondering if I'm going to talk about that. We're just going to leave that for now. Just enough in their early history makes me want to ask the question again. Should you trust the Watchtower? After looking at all the states, do you think the Watchtower is trustworthy in admitting the things that they've taught were wrong? And are they trustworthy in continuing to teach you truth now? Whenever they would make these changes and these dates move around and everything, they're saying, this is based on the Bible. Can you really trust that they know what the Bible teaches? I'd have to say no. Now, on the next part, we're going to be talking more about the faithful slave. Who is a faithful slave? Uh, they're supposed to be the ones that are giving us meat in due season. Well, what's the meat in due season? Let's take a look at that in the next time. Thank you.